Hey, hey, everybody! Welcome to a spooky, spooky edition of Vorpal Board. We're going to be starting the campaign of Betrayal Legacy. Uh, as usual, I'm James Lang. I'm here joined with uh, my cohorts, Mike Beatty and Thad Casey. Guys, how you doing? What's going on, everybody? Good evening, dudes. We are all in our super bunkers, uh, shielding in place, or whatever it's called, uh, against the coronavirus. I hope everybody out there is healthy and safe, uh, but we're going to take advantage of Vorpal Board to play the first mission of um, Betrayal Legacy tonight. So, first thing I want to say is this is going to be a spoiler stream because this is a legacy game, and the way le this legacy game works is there's a deck that kind of dictates the entire events of the campaign, and so if you don't want to see what happens in the campaign, this is probably not the stream for you, but uh, if you don't care, or you don't care about the, the first mission, then uh, then you can definitely check it out. If the, you've never seen Vorpal Board before, this is the platform that Mike, Thad, and I have built for playing uh, tabletop games remotely with each other. And um, I have the actual game to my left here, and we're going to be streaming uh, board and cards and everything in a very clever array of, of tools so that uh, Mike and Thad are able to play with me. Mike's in Wisconsin, and Thad um, uh, lives about 40 minutes away from me. So um, welcome to the stream. If you have questions about the system or about the game, uh, jump right in and ask. But a couple cool things that we're doing tonight. Uh, one is we're going to be using actual virtual minis. So I brought these um, nice transparent miniatures in, so each of us will be able to move our actual character. Uh, around on the board so the guys won't be, have to tell me oh I want to move here I want to move here I want to move here uh, they'll just be able to move their character for themselves so uh, that's neat and um, the other thing about uh, legacy games is that a lot of them you have to write stuff on the cards and put stickers on the cards and stuff um, so I'll be doing that with the real copier uh, or the real copy here and um, and then rescanning stuff in for the next sessions uh, when we continue play so that's how that's gonna work um, Mike has never played betrayal any betrayal game. Mike, is that true? That's a correct statement. Yes. So hopefully you're the traitor. So uh, <laughs> so you've never played before. That suits uh, my uh, my demeanor. Yeah. Um, that and I have both played. I've never played any of Legacy. I've just played the regular game, and I think that's the same. Yeah. Um, guys, Agent Dave says glad to see you two doing well. It's been a while, so he's just had to deal with me uh, for the last couple streams. <laughs> So, um, Holistic Developer, those minis... So, we do have the ability to scan miniatures in the box. This isn't how I brought these ones in. They were having a little bit of difficulty coming in, mainly because the bases on these are pretty big for how, um, how big the images are. So, what I did is I just... Or, how big the, the minis, uh, the actual characters are. So, what I did is I just took a picture of them standing on the pink sheet, and I just used an app on my phone called Background Remover to pull out all the pink. Um, it's a little bit more precise, and then I just brought those PNGs right into the game. So, to bring these in, I don't know, to, to do this whole process, it took four or five minutes. It was a really easy process. Um, so that's something you can do with your hero miniatures if you want to bring them in. Um, if you don't want to skin them in with the box. Uh, okay, so the way that this game starts is we all start in the entrance hall. We're going to explore this spooky house. One of us is going to become the traitor. Uh, which is a mechanic that's going to be the first time we're trying to do that in Vorpal. So we have to send instructions to the trader versus instructions to the survivors. And that's going to be, um, we're going to see how that works. And um, other than that, I don't think there's anything particularly new that we'll be showing off today. Um, one thing that I am going to do is I'm going to lock all of our player boards. So now they can't be moved. So if any of the guys by accident go to move their, uh, their little trackers... Uh, and they miss, the uh, the boards won't move. They get locked, which is nice. So, um, okay. So the absolute first thing that happens, this game is very cool. You have a legacy deck. It comes wrapped. It tells you, do not look at it. Do not shuffle it. Don't do shuffle. not mess <laughs> with it. Because if, if you do, the game doesn't work anymore. And if you happen to drop it, <laughs> you have to find somebody to put it back in order for you who isn't playing the game. The cards are numbered, uh, so so they have thought about that contingency as well. Um, okay. So here we go. Do we have uh, special dice for tonight, James? Uh, we do have special dice for tonight. They are not 3D. Uh, we are, for tonight, using the 2D dice. 
but there is a game title of Betrayal at House on the Hill inside the game, or inside the dice search that, and there's only one type of die. It's just a weird D6. Got it. All right, so the first card of the Legacy deck says, Start play. When the first omen tile is discovered, turn this card over and read it aloud. Remember, there are no omen cards yet. You haven't missed anything. So the game starts with no omens. Um, all right, so I'm going to start first just because I'm at the top of the board here. And um, I have a speed of four. So I can move four spaces. And during this phase of the game, we're all buddies. Um... Yeah, Dave, that's exactly right. If uh, if I knock the cards over, I will scream upstairs to Andrea and ask her to come down <laughs> and uh, and put the cards back in order for me. Um, oh, I actually meant to uh, meant to move these guys out of the way. There we go. Um, okay, cool. So I get to go four spaces. Um, I'm just gonna go north here. I'm just gonna start exploring the uh, exploring the house. And so I will move my little girl. I'm playing as every single session, you give yourself a name um, and an age. I'm actually playing as Alyssa Lang, which is maybe a bad choice because everybody usually dies or gets possessed in this game. And I don't want that to happen to my daughter. But uh, but I am, um, I'm Alyssa Lang. I'm age seven. Um, and that's, that's the first generation um, for me. And then Thad, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm uh, Dr. Edgar Casey, and I am a, what did I decide, 38-year-old? 38 38-year-old, 38 yep. And this is, six, this is 1666. It tells us what year we're playing. And if you're a doctor in that time, you are Robin Graves, my friend. You are a, yeah. <laughs> you are a creep, that's for sure. Well, and this mini looks like that, too, so it's perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then, um, Mike, you want to introduce yourself? Oh yeah, my lovely lass here is, uh, this is Gertrude, maybe, and uh, she's 23, I believe. Uh, 23, that's exactly right. Um, okay, so I'm going to go north, and the way that this works is uh, I look through tiles until I find one uh, that's for the right zone I'm in, and the first one on top of is in my zone uh, of ground floor, and uh, it's the hearth. Ooh. Okay, and then, and then you uh, you do your best to sort of position it, um, connecting doorways. And the interesting thing is that is an event. So that little symbol there tells me what I'm supposed to do. And what I'm supposed to do in this case is draw an event card. I go through the deck looking for one that is the ground floor. And then I flip it over. It says whispers. You hear someone whispering in a tongue you can't recognize. If this box is checked and the haunt hasn't started, place the mouth token on this tile. The box uh, is not checked, so I don't put the mouth token out. Um, this is kind of the weird thing about this game is it will change with time. So this box will get checked and the next time we play, different things will happen, which is interesting. Um, all right, so I make a knowledge roll. Um, and the way that rolls work in this game is I look at my knowledge. Um, my knowledge is four. So I roll four die. Oh, holy smokes. Two, four, six, seven. Dang. So that's a great roll. Um, oh, man. We got to do math with the old dice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to sum up. So spoiled you, at the you, new You got to sum up ones and twos, which <laughs> might be a little bit tough for this crowd. Um, okay. So uh, on four plus, I chant with it and feel myself growing stronger. So I gain <laughs> one in any trait. So let's see. Ooh. I'm going to gain one. I'm going to gain one in speed, because that will get me up to uh, five. And then um, that is the end of my turn. Because I don't have any items yet or anything. My actions that you can always take are to pick stuff up, give things, drop things, take things, and attack. But you can't attack until after the haunt has started. And I don't have any items or whatever, so that's my turn. Cool, dude. All right, so, so Mike, it's going to be you, yeah. All right, can I discover uh, south here? All right, so yeah, you get to move your guy. Uh, well, I need a tile, otherwise I'm just in... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. You, you're, just, you're just in the ether. Ah. All right, let's see. They're all outside tiles. All right, so here's a ground floor. All right, Mike, it's the, uh, it's the common room. 
Hmm. And you can make it go northeast or northwest. Which would you rather? Um, let's have it go north and west. This will be a cool game when we get deck going. We can play purely digital. Yeah, you know, like we could we could scan in the entire the entire deck. Mike, I'm I'm passing you the event right now. Mm -hmm. So that's your event card right there. So you can go ahead and uh, check it out. I need to read this out loud. These are public, aren't they? They are public. Yep. Yep. Okay. So yeah, read it, man. Read it. What happened? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stacked furniture. The furniture in this room is stacked in the strangest of ways. The pile lurches towards you. So I have to make a might roll. Um, if this box is checked, subtract two from the result, but it's not checked. Cool. So might roll. What is my might rating? Uh, or three, right? Oh, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a wimp. Kind of a wimp. Yeah. Okay. So like three bang. You roll three die. Okay. You got a good chance, Mike. <laughs> I guess. No, seriously. Oh, bam! Nope. You jinxed me. <laughs> What'd you do? Craps. Two. Take out one damage. Go roll a seven. Damage is on my. What does it take off for damage? Might. It takes physical damage. Physical so damage, which could either be. Oh, right, right, right. Right. Either might speed or speed. and might. Yep. You probably don't want to choose might. No. Oh. Wow. That's rough. You don't want to choose speed either. I'm weak. Yeah. How about I choose neither of those? I'll choose speed, I guess. You can you can split it too. You can do one and one if you wanted. I only take one total, right? Oh yeah, one total physical damage. Yeah, so yeah you got to. I don't want to split unless I can do half and half. I'll do speed. Okay, so you're good. Yep. I think that these cards just get buried, so they just go back down into the uh, back into the event deck. Interesting. Um, okay, so Thad, what are you gonna do? Mike, you gotta move your uh, counter, buddy. Oh, these are virtual counters. Yeah, oh, virtual thought, counters, man. Yeah, that's hilarious. I thought uh, you did uh, put them on there. It looked that good. It, the the virtuals are so much better than the uh, the hard ones because my kids have managed to destroy the edge of the cards on my actual game. Oh yeah, because they like already. They're, they're the snap on kind, right? That slides. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotta get some new kids. Let's be honest. <laughs> I know. Uh, not for me, anyway. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I'm out of the game. No more new kids. None. No. I need to on the kid. On the kids. Three. All right. So I have a speed of four. I'll go ahead. One, two, three, up to the upper landing, and we'll go right up here. So give me a top decker. So th that is is moving away from us already, getting real creepy out in the house. No, I'm, we're, we have to explore the house as a team. I'm I'm splitting. Okay. Dr. Creepy's going to the bedroom upstairs. Yeah, yeah. What room is that? That is the unfinished room, and you found an item. So first item. Awesome. Let's see what you got. Yeah, the, this game is very interesting because, like, early on, you're kind of, like, rooting for each other to find good stuff. And then, uh, yeah. then you're like, oh no, please don't let that guy be the, the <laughs> guy who's going to kill all of us. <laughs> all right, so that right, got sweet. the- Sweet, I got a nice ranged weapon. Pistol. Ma's flint, flintlock pistol. Ma went mad and shot Pa. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so what's interesting is, um, one of the things about this game is you can do what's called heirlooming an item, which then becomes a family, family heirloom. But I guess it's only some of the the items are able to be family heirlooms because yeah. they have There's a little no icon on them. Spot, right? yeah. yeah, I thought it was all items, but I guess it's not. So you. So can't... what does that do for you again? Like I was unclear about what the heirlooming actually. So you can you. heirloom one item per game, and uh, each family has a total of nine heirlooms across the entire campaign, and all it does is it makes that item more powerful for you. So then if you happen to find it in a later game, it's more powerful for you the second time around. Oh, interesting. So the interesting thing is that, like, as you play this game, you're like, oh, shit, I hope I find the magic mirror or whatever because that's a family heirloom of mine and that would really help me right now. Um, so it just kind of it ups the stakes with the items that you're searching for. Okay, so, Thad, you're done. Yep. And then, um, all right, I'm going to go... I'm going to go west see what I can find over here. 
James, when the cards show up, can you zoom on them for everybody? Uh, I did. Yeah, I saw. The, uh, okay, good. Yeah, uh, Holistic asked for that a little bit ago. Cool. Interesting. There are no more cards uh, for this area of the house. Not so, at all? Yeah, so the game starts with not a lot of tiles. It starts oh, with wow. like 10% of the total tiles. So you tiles. die, right? No, so you don't, if there are none, you don't lose your, you don't lose your move stepping in. You just flip through all of them, and if you can't find one, then you just don't lose a move. So I'm going to go outside. One, two, one, two, three. See what I can find outside. So that's interesting, the whole point of the betrayal in the house of the hill is to get outside yeah we're playing outside in legacy yeah there's this is a new zone in legacy yeah all right so i found the pond and that's just an event sure the the omen image is like a bird uh, correct yeah yeah okay. i want to make sure i don't miss it all right so yep. here's an event Ongoing event, glow. There is a small crack in the earth here. Strange mists emerge, lit by a blinding light. Witchcraft, certainly. If the haunt has started, bury this card and draw another. Otherwise, keep reading. Place the bright light token on this tile. If you end your turn here, you may lose two sanity to gain one might. So it's your choice. <laughs> I'm going to scan this in. We can just keep that on the board. And Mike, too, I don't know if you picked up in the rules, but you lose two ticks. So, for example, you, you wouldn't go... You would go from four down to three, three. You'd go to the red three. You lose ticks, not the number. Until the haunt starts, right? Well, no, just anytime it says lose two, it means it means notches, not numbers. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I got that. Yeah. Thank you. Like, and so, like, when you lost one damage, you only moved. It might it might be that your number doesn't go down. Uh, gotcha. Oh, so yeah. uh, holistic developer, this tile up here is the basement. So the game starts with one tile of the upstairs, one of the basement, and uh, one of the outside, and then this starting uh, hallway here. I was just going to ask, how can we get to the basement? I don't see any downstairs. It, it doesn't start with a way down to the basement. So you got to. <laughs> okay. And sometimes you'll find traps that fall into the basement. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll yeah. find the way to the basement. Yeah, you'll get Although... there. You'll get there. Don't worry. All right. I'll trust you on that. Okay, Mike. So, uh, so you are up. So I lost the speed last time, so I can't go quite as far, correct? So. Yeah, so your I speed is now three. three. Yep. Uh, so one, two. Yeah, you gotta I'll come go outside, one. unfortunately. Yeah, I'll come outside and then I'll go east. Okay, you can move your guy, don't worry. Oh, yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be the theme for the night, is being able to move your own guy. I'm gonna forget every time, just, yeah. just on purpose now. Okay. Ooh, Mike. You found the I woods. Found, I found a raven? No, still no raven. You found the woods. So it, it, it has two entries, here and here. So you could have it go north or south. Um. Let's have it go north. Okay, so like this. Yeah. All right, and then. Uh, Your event card. Event event. Let's do this event. This it right here. You scan it. No, no, no. That's oh. mine. That's oh, that's the, other yeah, one. Yeah, that's the bright light. So this is the bright lights token right there. And we'll just leave this event card down. Oh, okay, here. we'll just flip. Yeah. So. All right, Mike. So this is your event. Feral beasts, cool. Ooh. Uh, the animals have gone feral. Teeth bared, eyes glinting with madness. Each other player on a tile with at least one ghost takes one physical damage. Then keep reading. Okay. We don't have any ghosts. Have ghosts right? Yeah. So I don't have to do anything, or? Uh, no. Then you got to make a might roll. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, let's see. What am I at? So your might isn't good, right? You're at three. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Yeah, three still. Oh, man. Okay, so you got to get a right. four plus to fight him off. Okay, no fat jinx, no fat jinx. Ah! All right. There you go. Yeah, that's a... 
They oh. grabbed me, dragged me off. Oh, okay. That's no big deal. They just took you to the outside. You're already outside, so. So I stay here or do I have to go to a different tile? I'd say you probably have to move yourself. That's what I was thinking. Um, they drag you. They don't, they don't drag you to the same tile. No, they drag me back. Yeah, all right. So, And then as they slink away, you say, thank you, sirs. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, that was nice. Thank you. Um, all right, Dad, what are you doing? Upstairs. Big Daddy's, Big Daddy's moving around upstairs. Yeah, I get the house to myself. Yeah, that's right. All right, so let's see if there are any upstairs tiles. Dad, there are not any upstairs tiles. Okay. So this is interesting. Yeah, this is a strange way to start. All right, so... Hmm. So you got to come all the way down to the One, outside. Just so two. you know, because it is legal for... Like, if you guys were sitting here, you'd be able to see the whole pile. The only tiles there are, there are two outside and one basement. Okay. So I moved it. my four. I am done. That sucks. Um, all right, so I'm up. Um, I'm going to move to the north. Is... Have I been playing uh, Betrayal in the House of the Hill wrong? What do you mean? Because we have a full stack of like, Oh, no, no, no. House. It's just the Legacy version. Okay. So oh, every game, like, the house gets bigger in Legacy. Okay. So the way that it ships, all the tiles are, like, face down in the box, and you're not allowed to flip them over until the game tells you. <laughs> so... Do you know how many there are total? Once I don't. I don't. Um, it's one of those games where I, like, I just tried not to read anything. You know what I mean? Um, all right, so I finally got an omen. So the hanging tree. That doesn't that doesn't sound foreboding at all. The hanging tree. Um, all right. It's for happy events, I think. So 1960 or 1666, the chalice, turn to entry 102 in the Bleak Journal. The game comes with uh, a couple of books, actually three books. 102. And then uh, it's where all the flavor text and stuff is. All right, 102. Nothing in this house seems right. What would the chalice be doing here by the tree? As for that family, how is it they died in the pox when no one else even took sick? None of... Oh, shit. This isn't a disease, is it? If this is a disease... <laughs> Just come like, on. hang up the stream. Right before... Did we get the pox? It, the pox. Come on, the corona pox. None of it makes sense. Unless someone here is consorting with dark powers. That's it, isn't it? One of us killed the family and lured the rest of us here. One of us is a witch. Already you can feel a foul spell at work, draining your sanity away. Uh, Ook21, thanks for the follow. Um, the player who found the hanging tree draws the top card of the legacy deck, the chalice, and gives it its true name, the Chalice of Insanity. They are now carrying it. Then next, or then draw the next card from the legacy deck and read what it says on the other side in order to set up the haunt. Okay, so I draw the next card off the top of the legacy deck, which is I, the chalice. This, see, this is why this game is cool. It says chalice of, and it has nothing on it. So there are a lot of cards like that that either you name or they get named based on when you find them during the legacy aspect, which I think is just very cool. So what chalice you of it? Corona. Well, no, it's called it's it's the chal the, the chalice of insanity is the name. Oh, oh gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Insanity. So is, this, uh, is this little like skull on that tile? Is that one of those ghosts it was talking about? So I think it is. I think those are places where ghosts can be. Um, okay. And I I don't know how ghosts appear. It doesn't say in the rule book, so I assume it will tell us once uh, ghosts come into the game. All right, it's so, a lot of spots for them. Yeah, they can come all over the house, I think. Yeah, um, and like I think generally they they just cause different game effects, like you just saw, where it's like if you're standing where a ghost is, it um, it will hurt you or whatever. Okay, so there's the Chalice of Insanity, and as you can see, we get to see the Vorpal the Vorpal board benefit here. I can write on this card and then immediately bring it into the session, and it's got my beautiful handwriting on it. Um, okay, so. What's cool is now I can drink that when I feel like it, if I want to, but uh, I I don't have to. So it's just like an item now for me. To... Okay. 
One of us is a witch, but who is it? Draw the next five cards and turn them face up. Destroy any that do not match the current player count. For example, in a four-player game, destroy the one card that does not say four players on it. Shuffle the remaining cards face down and give one to each player. Each player secretly scratches off the box below the player count. Oh shit, I did not know they had cards that you scratch off. How do we scratch in Vorpal Board? Well, I'll scratch them off with my eyes closed and then put them in the, uh, put them in the uh-huh. box. Um, all right, so... Do not scratch off any other boxes. Do not reveal what you scratched. Each player's card will reveal one of the following. Normal human or witch. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. I just, I like, I like that dichotomy. Oh, thank God, I'm a normal human. Ah, <laughs> I'm a witch. <laughs> After all players have scratched their card, turn to haunt one witch hunt in the secrets of survival. Wow, all right, so we auto... We auto went into the haunt. So I think my my guess that is that this is the kind of the learn to play the tutorial mission. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but there's no way to skip it because like uh, you, you, it's the legacy deck. You have to play it. Um, yeah. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I have the five cards and. Destroy any that do not match the current player count. So I'm gonna get rid of five. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of these two. And I think that destroy means I like tear them up. Um, okay. So I'm going to. Man, all right. This one's me. Cause I want to learn how the scratching, how easy the scratching is. Okay. That's a satisfying scratching sound. Oh yeah, did you guys can you could you hear that on your end? Yeah, that pretty well. All right, so uh, this will be for whichever one of you grabs it. And you I do take not, her mic. I do not know what that is. And then let me know, Mike, if you cannot read it. You cannot read what you're supposed to be. I can read it. Okay. You guys can look at my eyes. My eyes are looking at you while I'm scratching it. <laughs> Okay, Fed, so that one's you. All right, so now one of us knows that we're the witch, and uh, one of us knows that we are, or two of us know that we're humans. And then we turn to haunt number one, the witch hunt in the Secrets of Survival book. <laughs> normal humans, we're all normal humans. That's exactly right. Yeah. One time, this, this is a sidebar, but there's this game called uh, um, Battlestar Galactica that has a similar mechanic where somebody's the Cylon and everybody else is humans, and the Cylon just tries to like fuck up the entire game for the humans, um, and you're trying to you're all accusing each other each other of being the Cylon. And one time I played this, there's only supposed to be one Cylon for the player count I was playing, but we screwed it up, and there were two Cylons, <laughs> and so the entire time we were playing. Both Cylons, I was one and my buddy Vivek was the other, and we were like both befuddled, like things were getting ruined that we didn't ruin. And we, you know, we didn't want to give away that we were the Cylons, so we played the whole game. We got to the very end and somebody accused him of being a Cylon, and he's like, yes. And I was like, oh no. We, <laughs> we just spent two hours or whatever playing the game entirely wrong, but it was memorable at least. Okay. Um, all right, so Witch Hunt. We must kill the witch before the witch kills us. We know these things to be true, that the witch is draining our sanity and that they will hide their identity until they would die. All right, set up. You should be set up. Everyone should have scratched their cards so they know if they are a normal human or the witch. Since there is a hidden traitor in this haunt and there aren't any monsters, you will not use the traitor or monster cards because we don't know. There's nobody who is the traitor until the very end, I believe. Um, and then the, the player to the left of the haunt revealer, I was the haunt revealer, so to the so left would be, me Mike, would be Mike. Uh, Mike, yeah, because it's the left is like the oh, next yeah, yeah. player, yeah. Um, we'll take the first turn. All right, the overview. You win when you kill the witch or are the last player survive, alive. So the, the, the good guys are trying to kill the witch, the witch is trying to kill the good guys or have the good guys die. So wait a second. So the witch has nothing to do with who the traitor is? The witch is the traitor. Oh, okay. I was about to say yeah, that would make yeah, the yeah, most yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. The traitor of this haunt is not known at the start. 
players may attack and steal from each other. So we're just going to have to like be like, I'm not the witch, I swear to God. Uh, the traitor of this haunt is not known at the start. Players may attack and steal from each other and may choose to act as small obstacles for other players. The witch has none of the associated abilities of being the traitor. So normally, the traitor has a bunch of additional strengths. They, they don't get blocked by um, uh, small and large obstacles, stuff like that. You may not say what's on your card unless you die or the haunt allows you to. Of course, you are likely lying, especially if you are the witch. If you are the witch, if you are the last player alive and you're the witch, draw card P279 from the Purgatory deck and add your family crest to it. <laughs> so you get, a, you get a perk if you win. Uh, all right. So here's a couple special rules for the haunt. At the end of our turn, if you did not attack another player, roll one die and lose that much sanity. So we're all going to be going insane. What? Uh, trying oh. not to kill each other. Game on! Your sanity, Game yeah, and, and Thad, and Thad <laughs> is standing here just stroking his flintlock pistol. Have you noticed that I'm, I got a zoom in right now? Yeah, Thad's looking at that pistol real carefully. Hmm. Um, if you are the witch and this would kill you, reveal your card. You may skip this step and take no damage. Okay, so you can't die, I think, from that sanity drop on the witch. Um... And then you a can or cannot. You cannot. If you're the witch and this would kill you, that drop in sanity, you reveal the fact that you're a witch and you can skip this step and take no damage. So you're you're gonna want to eat that sanity for a while because you don't want people to know you're the witch. But it does it can't kill you. You can get it down to almost death, but it won't kill you. It, only if you're the witch. Uh, and then reaction, reveal your card when you die, reveal your card to show if you're the witch or a normal human. If you are the first to die, immediately draw the top card of the legacy deck, whether you are human or witch. And when you win, turn to entry 117 in the Bleak Journal. So we're essentially just going at each other's throats here, guys. Uh, which, which is good. Um, and Mike, you get to go first. Cool. And uh, I'm not the witch. I'm just, just going to throw that out there. Definitely not the witch. Oh, that would make the most sense. Um... Jeez. Uh, all right, that's cool. Uh, Thad's right here, right? Thad's right you're there. I'm up here. Yeah. So who you gonna go at? You gotta go after one of us. Or you're gonna start losing sanity. Okay. The, the tiles that are still available are one in the basement and one in the outside. So if you did choose to, you could explore. Let's go up to here and <laughs> go start, to hell. Uh, and start <laughs> going after it. Well, you can move yourself. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yep. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, holistic developer. Uh, a player dies when any of their trait goes to zero. Um, you cannot die until the haunt has begun. So if you just get messed up by the ghosts or by the events of the house, it won't kill you. You just get down to uh, one space away from the skull. But once we're playing, if you get to the skull, you die. All right, Mike, so you're going to attack me? Yes, All right, sir. so you attack me I with a five. Uh, five. All right, so I you attack me with uh with it's a might attack, and then I can yeah. use either might or speed to defend, I believe. Is that right, then? Mm, or is you, it just you might? Defend, to defend with the might, and oh, you can the damage difference you can take either to speed or to or to might. Okay, correct. So my might is three, matching yours, Mike. But so you, got. you rolled a five. Yeah. Oh, that's rough. All right, so I take three damage. Three physical damage. Three physical damage, which for me is not... I mean, I'm pretty fast. So I'm going to take one to speed. And then I'm going to take two to might. It's nasty. Okay. Um, all right, so Mike does not take a sanity roll because he attacked. So you're all right, Mike. All right, Dad. All right, so I'm going to move up here for that's two moves. I'm going to <sighs> take a pot shot at the meaty. Ah, all right. Yo, yo. Which means I roll five dice with my revolver. Oh, 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 you got to be kidding. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Three. So oh, why, no. it, why did you I get, got a two. Why did you get five dice then? Because I have four might. 
and then I have the revolver, so oh, I get an roll extra one additional die. Attack. Attack. Right. Roll my oh no, but it's, it's a speed attack. But it was it four is. for it's four for you anyway, so it would have been fine. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Oh, it's an attack. Yeah, yeah. speed attack. Okay, so that's fine. Sure. It would have been four anyway. So I All take right. one damage on uh, one of my things here. Correct. And then I still have two movement left. Correct. And I will one, two, and explore the last outside. Oh man, this okay. is rough. Ooh, you found an interesting location. Come on, item, item, item. It is an item. Beautiful. Which is bad news for Mike and I. <laughs> yeah. It's a we're gonna scope. We're, we're gonna get revolver sh scope. Shot down, yeah. And James, you're gonna have to read that card. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make a speed roll. It looks like. So here comes your item. Yeah. So that uh, that step pad. Uh, you have to drink and make a speed roll, but it's your choice. You don't have to do it. Uh, if you drink and... If you roll a zero, you lose one might. If you roll a one or two, you gain one speed. And if you roll a three plus, you weren't thirsty, lose all moves. Oh. And it's with a speed roll. What? So it's just if you're really... If your speed is very low, you would want to drink from the water, I guess. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and roll my speed. Yeah, you can try oh, What the hell? I need some speed water. I got a six. You got a six? You weren't thirsty. You weren't, you weren't thirsty, all. lose all moves, so. Okay. Um, that's interesting. I didn't find the basement entrance. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is, it is kind of a strange. They must just open it up after this first prologue and, like, give you a bunch more tiles. Probably yeah. just teaching you how to fight each other, essentially. Um, all right, so it's my turn. Kill. Yeah, just kill, kill, kill. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to do it. So, Mike, are you going to act as a uh, are you going to act as a um, a blocker of me of me? How does that work again? So, I, like, I uh, you can act as a what? small obstacle to me, which means I can't leave the. Uh, I have to spend one speed to step, an extra speed to step out of the square. What's your current speed? Uh, my current speed is four. So uh, does that even matter for you, I guess? Uh, no, my current, um, my, I thought I just took some damage to speed, didn't I? I did. Oh, but my speed had gone up. I had increased my speed. I rolled on, on the very first turn and increased my speed. So yeah, my speed is four currently. Gotcha. Um, does it, so what do I... Other than just being a pain in the butt, do, does that benefit me in any way? No, it's just a pain in the butt. It? I mean, it's just to, to make it so it's harder for me to move around, essentially. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna impede you. You are going to impede me. Yeah, I don't It's very witch-like. Yeah, it, it is pretty witch-like. Um, all right, so you're going to impede me by one. I have a speed of four. I hope there's two witches. One, two, three. And then... Um, Hmm. Oh shit. There are no ghosts on my tile. They're supposed to be? No, just I, uh, this this uh, chalice of insanity is it's only beneficial for ghosts on your tile. And there aren't any on my tile, so. You wanna rethink that? This isn't chess, we'll let you move again if you want. Well, it looks like there's one right there. There was, yes. So I am gonna, I am gonna go, I am gonna go back. It's a, it's a gentleman's game. We'll allow that. Um. Mm -hmm. Unless you're a wish. Uh, in, which, in which case, we want Mike right next to you to. No, attack I'm, you next I'm, 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 I'm gonna do this move. I, I'm gonna do my two steps, and then uh, that's that's my turn. All right. So you have to take. The... I take one sanity damage, I believe. All right, thought you rolled for it, didn't you? Okay. Roll one die and lose that much sanity. Yep. So I'm up. Uh, All right, I lose one sanity. One sanity. 
All right, Mike, you're up. Uh, I'm slow AF, so <laughs> you can't catch me, baby. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go down here. I and, paid very uh, close attention to your uh, speed. Roll for sanity. Oh uh, no! I feel your sanity dripping away. Yeah, it's critical now for you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Art, life or art imitates life, I guess. <laughs> All right, that's up. All right, I'm gonna take a pot shot <laughs> at the blue boy. This is working out exactly as how I imagined it. <laughs> only, I'm totes not a witch, dude. What are you doing? Oh uh, come on! Uh, look how close that's he was real. to the, the pistol. Almost blew up in his hand. If he'd have rolled a zero or a one, it blows up in his hand. Oh seriously? Yeah, yeah. yeah dude, that's so bad. All right, okay. so you have a two coming, in, a two coming at Mike. My lord, you are getting so lucky. Oh no! Uh, man. Uh, 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 uh. How does that uh, happen? I rolled like crap too. Yeah. So so and then Mike, just so in case you don't know, like since you're not on his square, you don't do the damage back to him. Even if you would, even That's if you would, even if you had rolled better than him, since you're not in a melee. Oh, I didn't know that was even an option. If you're getting attacked. yeah, if you attack oh, me wow. and I roll higher than you, you take damage. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, good so you got to think about that when you're doing melee attacks. All right, so Thad okay. took a shot at you, and now what's? Your... I'm gonna move. Okay. Is this gonna cost me an extra mic? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so you're definitely the witch. Uh, no so way, that's dude. You're the witch. One, two. I'm just a normal human. Three to get out, and then four, I'm here. All right, okay. my turn. Cracked. Hell yeah, baby. All right, let's see what I can do. I'm so weak. Well, Mike's only a three also. Let's do this, Mike. Do you have to move on to my square? Yeah. He does. All right, so I'm going to step in, and then I'm going to attack Mike with my, uh, my, um, my might. Which is a three. How are you? Okay. This is a seven-year-old attacking you, Mike. By the way. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll take Ooh. three. I'll take three. That's not bad. That's not bad. Let's see what I got. So I would do damage to you if I get better than three, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh no damage. Tight. All right. Thank so, you. so I that was one step in, then I attack, and then I still have speed-wise two more, so you're going to impede me, I assume, Mike, right? You have three more. Oh, well, one to oh, get yeah. out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So sure. after I get out. Yeah. But, yeah, I have four speed, so one in, two to two to get out, uh, three to get here, four to get here. Did I do that right? One, two, three, four. Yep. Uh, okay. So I'm now up here on the ghost tile. And I can use my Chalice of Insanity. Ah, but I... God. There's only That's, one ghost there. It's and just, it's one die. Yeah. So I would get... That, right? I would, yeah, I would get... I could heal a critical trait. I don't have any critical traits. So no, there's no, there's no use of me to use it right now. It's a bummer. Okay. Alright. So that's my turn. I don't lose sanity because I attacked Mike. Mike, you're up. And Jerkface James is like running away from me, so I think I'm pretty much uh, gonna have to. You have two speed, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, so you, I can, can... you can get oh, to either. Oh, I can of attack us. after. Choose yeah, your yeah. adventure. Yeah. Who you, who you want to go? Good you don't enough. want me. Yeah, you're not the witch, right? No. Then let's do it. All right. Come on. Going for the weakling. All right. So you're attacking me with might. Three three v three. All right. Three, okay. Yes. Ooh. Big one. This might be the end of Ooh. Oh, wow. Three. Destroyed. All right, so Mike goes down. Oh, wait, wait, let's see. You have to take your damage to a combination of speed and might. I hit you for three, right? I think I'm done. Though. Oh, yeah, you are. Because any one yeah. of them would be gone. Yeah, yeah so either, or either might or speed. Okay, so if you go down, let's read what happens. Reveal your card to show if you are a witch or a normal human. Let's see what's happening here. Oh, you just rotated this guy. Is that what you're supposed to do? Uh, no, this, you reveal this card. Right, right, oh, yeah, anyway, okay. Yeah, yeah, so no flip, flip, flip this boy. 
Normal human! Ah, oh, shit! Normal human! Uh, so normal, yo. Normal human, huh? Alright, so, Mike, your corpse is there. Uh, that's a bummer. And, Mike, just for my clarity, you unlocked that to rotate it, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Alright, I wanted to make sure that you hadn't figured out yeah, a way yeah. to rotate the card, I... even though it was locked. Okay, cool. Um, all yeah, right. maybe flip. Okay, so... That sucks, so Thad's gonna come and, uh, kill my ass. He's the witch. Your turn. One, two, three. Take a shot! Yeah, the speed, so you get oh, five boy. die. It's gonna kill my ass. Dude. It's gonna blow up in your hand. <laughs> and then, do you always defend with might, no matter what? Yes. Even on so. melee, even on range attacks. That's uh, actually, that's a good question. Maybe you do defend with speed. Yeah, I'm gonna check that. It's a speed attack, so I think you would defend with that trait, right? Uh, I'm just gonna check. Like you think you're faster than a gun or something? Rules check. That's right, Dave. part of the stream yeah when i look Rules at least no but we got we, we got good uh we got good like creepy music now though so that's i know good. i wish you could hear it yeah okay this attack may use a trait other than might if so the attacker and defender make a roll using the same trait same oh so trait. we've been doing that wrong the whole yeah. time yep oops okay so speed roll all right, so I roll speed against yours, so my speed is four. And you got a two, right, Thad? Yep. Dodged it. <laughs> okay. Still so let's see, where was I? It was one, two, three, and I will move back here. Mm. Okay. Well, I mean, the only thing that I can do is... Uh, MN Badger 1989, um, this is the prologue. It's it's uh, just haunt number one. So this is the absolute first thing we've done in this game. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go one, two. I'm bringing the fight. I'm bringing the fight to you. I'm clawing at you with my tiny hands, Thad, and you're about to put a flintlock pistol to my 70-year-old head. What is wrong with you? Um, all right, so I'm going to attack with uh, Might <laughs> for three. All right. Got to defend with Might. What's your Might? Four. Four. Ah, crap. Oh, and you man. take two damage. Two physical damage. So I can, eat, I can eat one on speed. I'll eat two on speed, actually, so I can keep my three. Mi oh, my, my Might's anyway. Okay, doesn't matter. All right, I'll take the two damage, and now Thad is up. Um, yeah, go ahead and take another shot. This is riveting. Come on, get a roll other than freaking two. All right, there oh, we go, six. six. All right, well, that's... That's rough. I don't think you can no, do I much don't. other than tie it, right? Yeah, so I roll a speed, which for me is now two. That's going to be hard to beat a six. Uh, actually impossible, but I'll roll, but I'll roll <laughs> it anyway. Very hard. And so four damage, oh, which will kill me. So so Dunzo. The Done. witch is dead. The witch. Yeah, right. Um, let reveal me, your card. Yeah, uh, let me reveal my card, which I threw in this pile. Shit. Normal human. Oh no, you were the human all time. Uh oh, Thad, where are you? You give me a. Are you giving me a? You didn't think you were the witch. So at the end, I'm supposed to reveal my card anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. Please be human. Double, Please double, be human. double flip it. How are we all normal humans? <laughs> How's that possible? I thought Mike was the witch for sure. <laughs> that was the best. We're all Cylons. It, they all say normal. Oh no. Oh no. 
<laughs> it might be that there was no witch. How awesome would that be? Oh, no and, way. That's oh, fantastic. that's oh, yeah. a really good mind fuck if that's what it is. No, but look, all um, three of them. I have, I have the three of them, and we all But you can play, we but you can play with five the, players, the three can't player you? three-player area, yeah. Oh, I see. There's no uh, witch, MN Badger 1989 says. Oh, <laughs> that's really That's really good. good. That's really good. That's, that's awesome. That is really good. Good for you, Betrayal. Oh, man. Okay, well so. Done. Oh, that is. Perfect. That's, that's good. All right. I just murdered a freaking nine-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. I mean, she green. was she was a I witch though, for for real. <laughs> okay, well, so I won. Okay, so um, we actually did uh, because we're gonna screw this up constantly. We did screw that up, and by we, I meant me. Um, okay, so the first person to die, we were supposed to read this legacy card after one person dies. Oops. So here's the text. Uh, read the italicized text silently. Which, Mike, this would have been your card. Okay. Yep. Something calls you downward. Something long asleep and so, so hungry. Your soul is pulled through a chasm. Through a land made of ice, a world of giants, a forgotten city, a rainbow, then down through fire and finally into utter darkness. Now you realize the truth. There was no witch. You were all driven mad by some dark power. You know because that power is here with you, pressing against you in the pitch black. You start to rise, back up through those other worlds, back to the world you knew in life. You are bound to this homestead, one more ghost to haunt its grounds. And it says, right now, open door E and door 1 in the Folium Inferno. So this legacy... is all supposed to happen after I died? Yeah, so these legacy games come with this kind of just cardboard sheet. And what it is is like little doors you can open up that have like rules stuff in them. Or E. So this door E says placing ghosts. Every time a player dies, place a ghost sticker in an empty spot on that tile. If all the spots on that tile are already filled, do nothing. If you run out of stickers and need to place one, do nothing. So where I'm at right now, a ghost sticker goes? Yep. Cool. Where are the ghost stickers? I bet they're in. Uh, the other door I'm supposed to open up. Hold on. Yep. So in door one, there's a whole bunch of ghost stickers. Huh. <laughs> so Mike, your corpse is where? There. Hanging tree. It's fitting. Yeah. All right, so now there's two ghosts at the hanging tree. Once there is a break in the action, share these rules with the other players. They aren't secret. But keep the no witch part to yourself until the game end. <laughs> so the only thing that could have changed is since there would have been two ghosts here, I might have used the chalice. Because oh. there would have been two ghosts. Your corpse was there as well. But yeah. that's fine. Um, okay, so I put a ghost sticker also on the... Uh, Oh, the front steps now has a ghost. That's where I died. All right, so luckily it didn't actually change it. All right, cool. Okay, so that's that. And then it says, um, when you win, turn to entry 117 in the bleak journal. So if you're the last player alive and are the witch, draw P279 from the purgatory deck. That, there, there must just be no P279. That was just a lie, which is really cool. Um, okay. So, um, entry 117. Let's find out what it has to tell us here. This place is mine now, it seems. So there was no witch after all. I guess this is you, Thad. <laughs> <laughs> Strange how we all believed there was. Ah, well, no matter. The fields have been fertilized. I have disposed of the bodies. Home is where the hearts are. Let us hope the dead stay buried. Players should now give their family a last name. Oh, we, we're only supposed to do first name, I guess, to start. Writing it on the ribbon on the front of their family cards. Each player should record their character's fate on the back of their family card. Remember, this is for flavor only. Have fun with it. 
I was not accustomed to so much digging and grew weary near the end. I hope the bodies are buried deep enough. Add shallow graves to the event deck for future games. And finally, the deed to the house and place the winner's crest sticker on the front of it in the prologue space. Each game's Whoa. winner will claim the deed going forward. For the moment, it's yours. So the Casey family currently owns the deed to the house. Awesome. All right, so the way that this works is there's this purgatory deck, which is just a bunch of cards that you're supposed to fan out. Like if you need one, you fan out the bottom because that shows a little number and it tells you what number to pull. So we need to pull Shallow Graves, which is P201. And we're gonna add that to the event deck for future games. Okay. Oh, good, good question, Holistic Developer. Do you put a ghost where your body is, James? Uh, I did, yep. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, I missed that. And then uh, we pull P202, which is the deed to the house. And you own the house. You take the first turn at the start of the game. Congratulations. Huh. Very cool. Your crest is green, so we'll put it on the card. The cool. game comes with this whole set of crest stickers, which is what we'll put all over the game. Bad. Killed us both and uh, gets the deed to the house. So, with this one being a legacy, can you... Does it always have to be three people, or does each time you do... You can do more, right? Yeah, you can do more or less. Um, so, you always have to play three. Uh, yeah. But then you can play with any combo of the five families, and players can even play somebody else's family if you want to. Okay. Um, so, the interesting thing is, like, every game essentially is standalone. Hmm. But there's things like this deed to the house now that uh, just is yours. So if your family plays, you would get this deed to the house, the green family. Okay. And then cool. if it's a family that has played less than half of the games so far, you draw three items from the deck and let them uh, heirloom one of them because they they essentially didn't get a chance to heirloom any cards uh, at all. So... Um, okay, so we added those two. You got the deed for the moment. Then that's actually... That's the end of the prologue. Hmm. Which is... Which is it was a lot shorter than I thought it would be. I thought it would be like a full game, but I guess it's really just their... Um, just to watch your appetite. Just yeah, their, to learn to play. Yeah, it's their tutorial, essentially. You know, mm -hmm. get, get used to fighting, get used to doing that stuff. Um, okay, so let me put our actual last names on here. I can't wait to tear some of these cards up. I just love getting to tear cards up and throw them in the garbage. <laughs> get, them, get them out of here. Um, okay, a shredder. So, uh, I do have a shredder. Yeah, I'll just shred them. All right, yeah. so Mike, you're the mateys? Yes. This is where you get really nervous that you're going to spell something wrong when you're writing it on the, the box. <laughs> Casey? <laughs> Dang. It's awesome. This is a great way to start a game. We just all kill each other. Just, I, you know, I that is that is a great that is a great point way. blank range on the steps just, of my the new house. The first mission is make the three players kill each other <laughs> without there actually being an enemy. Like I think that's a really good. That's a really yeah, good. Yeah, perfect. To start it. Um, uh, yeah, because I know that this game, um, from what I've read, it throws you a lot of curveballs as you go, uh, where mechanics change and things get turned on their heads and stuff which is really cool um so i'm excited to see where it goes so um so all right so that's that's actually it's 10 15 this is insane this is the shortest session in uh, in vorpal team stream <laughs> history um, i just feel like we gotta play again yeah we're i don't think we're gonna start another one quite yeah that one that one would probably go till midnight um, yeah probably but um but okay, so our plan for this game is sometimes to play at team stream, sometimes to bring in folks from the Discord or from the Vorpal Board community. Sometimes we might just be like playing it to test new functionality, but we're gonna kind of use it as a game. One of the things that's tough for us as players is, um, is kind of like learning a new game every time that we're gonna go live uh, on stream. So this way we can play a game that we're all familiar with on a regular basis um, and also start bringing in folks uh, from the community to play the other families. Uh, so that's our plan. That's our plan for this one. Um, I think the the little minis is good, right? Like, I mean, that that was better for you guys to have your minis to move around, I assume. Yep. Okay. So we'll we'll definitely yeah. do that. Um, and then other than that, I think 
you know, dragging the little um, uh, uh, token things is, is cool, but I was almost thinking that it would be nicer if we just had, like, our four stats with up and down arrows on it, you know? Like, four little... Mm -hmm. Four little game components. I agree. It's a little uh, tricky. Because these things are a little bit tricky to do. Um, but uh, but for well, now, except, we'll play this way. Except it doesn't count incrementally. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's true. You wouldn't know, right? You wouldn't actually yeah. know where it is. That's a good point. You'd still need to keep this one in the right spot. Yeah. So yeah. I guess, all right, well, we got to play with this. All right. Those aren't bad. I mean, no, that's not bad. the real game, right? I actually like that it's digital because it... I think it's better than the hard cards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and and, and now that I'm thinking about it, there's no way you could do it with the hard with a with a game component anyway. No. Um, so okay, cool. Um, all right, and then we use red for the first time tonight, which I actually think looks pretty good. It didn't it didn't wash out the way the black washes out when sometimes when we're when we're doing a top down. Um, and then um, I don't know. Other than that, we played with the dark background tonight, which is something that maybe we've never streamed with. I don't think. Um, you guys didn't know that, but I was using the dark background uh, this evening. That's how I had it too. And um, and uh, and that's that's pretty much uh, that's our our first session. I'm excited to actually mess with this game a little bit. That how long are the sessions for you in Betrayal usually? Well, not that's that not really fair because I play with my my kids, mm. right? So, and my daughter's nine and my son's thirteen. Okay. So. Actually, she just turned 10 yesterday, so... Happy birthday. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, we, we usually take four hours total. Okay. Um, especially with the haunt phase. So the haunt phase is like a completely new set of rules, and yeah. it always takes us a while to read through the mechanics and make sure everybody's good to go. Yeah, so so the game plan for haunts, we because we, we had a hidden trader today, so we didn't have to worry about giving the haunt rules to the trader. Uh, yeah. But the plan with that is that I'm just going to take this phone, put it over the the haunt page, take a picture, and bring it into the session to let the trader read. Um, and so we didn't get to do that tonight, but uh, but um, but the next time we will be able to do that. So I'm kind of bummed that we didn't get to do that because I assumed that we would. But it's fine. Um, Let's go. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I think this I think this one will be fun, you know, and, and it'll help to uh, it'll help to do the same thing, the same game, a bunch of times in a row, because then you'll be able to tell changes that we're making to the software a little bit easier. Um, oh, Minnesota Badger says about forty five minutes. Maybe per. an hour and a half. Okay, great. Okay, and that's with five players. So um, yeah, theoretically, I was hoping, like I I had read it was like an hour to an hour and a half. So so that's cool. That's a good that's a good length. Um, especially, you know, if you're going to hope that somebody plays the game 13 times or whatever, I think you can't have it be like a three hour. <laughs> Is that it? 13? I think it's 13 in the campaign, but it comes with a bunch more haunts. So like once okay. the game finishes, it's just a really customized version of betrayal that you can play normal, uh, betrayal cool. with. Um, which I think is neat because then you have like cards that you've written on and crests yeah. and stuff that you remember. Oh yeah, that was my item or whatever, which is which is cool. Huh. Um, so, don't you tear up a lot of stuff too, or is that part of the customization? I think it's part of the customization. Of I think that eventually it gets your game to like an ending spot. Like you, you, it destroys cards that are overpowered or or only you know few, few time use or whatever. Um, okay, Thanks. so. Um, Oh yeah, holistic developer said chat text was hard to read on the dark background. Our chat does pop up on screen, like. Uh, Can you change it to white font? I probably could. Yeah, I didn't even think about that before we started because I always had assumed that we were gonna have that white background. So yeah, that's something I can look at. The holistic developer. Um, uh, okay, so so as far as Vorpal is concerned, we have uh, a big D and D stream tomorrow at one p.m. Eastern. We have a river break. It is the season premiere of season two. Uh, the heroes just uh, lost the queen. Lost her. Just oops. No, we didn't oops. lose her. Where the queen go? <laughs> By Chris Solo. He stole the queen. Fabled forty two stole our queen. So the uh, season two starts, and I bet people are going to have a whole lot of questions about where's the queen. So the heroes are probably going to have to deal with that. Um, we have. Jason. Uh, Jason from Beetle and Grimm is joining us tomorrow. Yeah, special special guest from Beetle and Grimm playing with us tomorrow. Uh, like I said, 1 p.m. Eastern uh, for the first episode. And um, I am not sure yet what we'll be doing. Oh, I am sure what we're going to be doing next week. I'm going to be playing 
a game called Scrolls of Sedlek. Skulls of Sedlek, which just went live on Kickstarter, I believe, today. Um, and it's going to be up 10, uh, 10 days. It's a button-shy wallet size game, which I am obsessed with. So if you haven't checked it out, uh, check out Skulls of Sedlek. That's S-E-D-L-E-C on Kickstarter. Um, and we're going to be playing that with the creator and, uh, and Jason Tegmeyer from uh, Button Shy next Tuesday. So that will replace Team Stream next week. Uh, if you're interested in potentially being on Community Games, definitely hit our Discord up. There's a link to the Discord on the Twitch page for our channel so you can uh, join in there and that's where we'll be kind of grabbing people to play games with us and uh, otherwise uh vorpa board is available for late pledge currently out on GameFound. um if you want to know the link to the late pledge you can go to vorpaboard.com or you can go to our kickstarter page and there's a link to it from there so Hopefully everybody is surviving out there, no matter where you are in the world. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully uh, we can be entertaining for you for, uh, for a few hours at a time. Um, Mike, got anything yes, important sir. to say? Got any, got any words for the people? No, I think my sanity in the game was far above what my current sanity is. So okay. <laughs> It was good to feel a little bit more collected. You feel, yeah, you felt so, better. That's good. I appreciate that. You got to role play as somebody who was mm -hmm. more sane. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So it benefited everyone. Yeah. That's good. All right, Thad, final words. Um, one other announcement. So <clears throat> with GaryCon getting shut down, which was a big event, uh, Virtual GaryCon is, is up and running, and Vorpal's going to have quite a bit of content actually up for that. Um, <clears throat> there's uh, Fabled42 is playing and streaming four days straight about 16 hours a day it's insane um and then vorpal ourselves we have a big game coming up um next thursday at 6 p.m eastern time uh i can say that uh dan mizushi the inked mage is going to be our dm um i'm going to play we also have tom from tabletop things uh kevin from galadoria games <clears throat> And then two special guests that I can't talk about yet. So it'll be five players and a DM. And uh, what's going to be cool about that, just like we do with our board game streams, um, Tom and, and Kevin are, are experts in their world. And uh, Dan is one heck of a DM. They're going to talk about their craft, talk about their businesses a little bit, kind of in an interview format. And um, it should be cool. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun 5e-based structure again. Uh, looking forward to that. So check that out. And then you'll also notice, too, we started um, hosting Fabled 42. So Chris Solo and his crew, they're they are streaming three or four times a week, uh, or three at least every week, sometimes more. Um, so we'll start, we've will start. we started hosting them. They use Vorpal Board exclusively. So um, if you're into D&D, certainly a lot of good content there. Yeah, and those guys uh, are pushing the envelope a little bit with sort of player count and, and doing things for DD yeah. uh, in, in Vorpal Board. So checking them out and sort of seeing what Chris has going on is always exciting uh, for us as well as I bet it would be interesting for people who are uh, Vorpal Board uh, interested. So uh, cool. All right. Um, if we're not into D&D, what would you recommend? I, uh, I, I don't know. I, you know, watch us, I guess, Dave. <laughs> Or hit us on Discord. Yeah, maybe you can yeah, yeah, yeah. the community games. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe you can join up for a game of uh, of, of betrayal now. So, um, all right, cool. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, stay safe, and we will see you tomorrow, and then um, again next week. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Right. Good night. Good night.